break checking season right yeah. now. What should I do to prepare for my vet coming to break check? Oh, excellent question. Uh, I wish more <laughs> clients asked me that sometimes. But um, I, I think the first thing to think about is when, when's the right time, right? So, you know, I think what's really important, yes, more and more veterinarians are using ultrasound to diagnose pregnancy, okay, which is fine. You could probably preg check as early as a month after the bulls are pulled. Um, but I, I think by and large, historically, we've still gone with probably a month or at least a month and a half um, before, the, you know, after the bulls are pulled uh, that the vet would come and examine the herd, okay? So if you go longer than that, that's fine. But once, once the calf gets too big or three and a half, four and a half, five, uh, or even further, it becomes harder, okay? And so it can just be, take longer for the vet to make their diagnosis than when it's earlier. So that is something I think to think about as far as what the timing is and obviously when it works into your, your schedule as well, but always something to keep in the back of your mind. When, when would be the most convenient, not, not just for the veterinarian, but to make it quicker and easier on the animals and yourself. So, so I guess that, that's probably the first question question I'd have you ask and some other things I guess that, that I come to mind is is just making sure you know you have enough labor that's going to be there what what information do you want to collect it's a real useful time it's the one time where we do see every cow hopefully that goes through the chute uh, so in some cases you may wish to score their body condition right and have the person someone there whether that's the vet or your yourself that would maybe sort those animals based on condition so you could feed them different if that was necessary um, just having somebody there if you want to record you know, whether they're pregnant or open, or are we gonna mark them some other way and sort them later? Realize that, you know, if you are gonna sort, that you need to have a you know, couple of pens to do that and, and make sure we have a system set up that everybody's aware of what's happening with those animals. Uh, so that's around the shoot, but realize that, you know, if you're gonna get the job done in, in a timely fashion, it's nice to have, depending on, uh, the size of your facility, but you may need a couple people behind pushing and bringing up the animals to keep it moving. Um, I think for me, I, I really value having clients that, that do have a good workforce behind that are keeping the animals coming and, and you can get the job done in, in a very timely fashion. So. Um, I, as far as giving the magical number of what it takes, I, I think it depends on the facility. But once you've worked your animals through it, I think most people could realize that probably you need at least two, if not three people behind the scenes getting the job done, moving cattle up in small groups and getting them through. So. In terms of equipment, is there anything we need to consider with our handling system, like getting it ready? Well, uh, that's a great question. So we're not all blessed with a nice hydraulic chute. I mean, I, I, the, the reality is for a lot of smaller producers that, that we can't afford or justify the cost of, of equipment like this. However, um, other uh, manual chutes will definitely suffice. It's much better than having to tie them all up. So the important thing is to make sure it's functional, okay, before your vet comes. And, and one of the ways that you can do that is make sure it's been cleaned out, that things aren't frozen, especially as we go into fall and winter here. Uh, it's inevitable that, that we're gonna have an, you know, some snow and we're gonna have some cold here. And so if you've run cattle through, or um, make sure you take the time to clean it out so it doesn't freeze up. Um, there are grease nipples that, you know, in certain locations that, that we could um, go over and make sure that uh, it has been lubricated and everything's functioning before the vet comes. Um, ran into situations where the wrong grease was even used and, and, and that shoots, uh, froze up solid. So something you want to think about ahead of time to, to make sure uh, that, that uh, that your shoot is operational before you try doing that job. So we've prepared uh, ourselves for the vet to come and it's the day before, should we bring our animals in now or should we wait? I think the nice thing to do is certainly to make sure the animals are gathered and are you know close to the yard. It doesn't mean they have to be penned up all night. In some cases that might be what you're required to do just because of the limitations on labor to bring them in and or you don't have 
um, maybe a paddock big enough to just keep them in, you know, a, a larger, um, but you, you want to confine them up the night before. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just make sure that they do have access to water in particular. Um, certainly they can be fed and um, that, that, that's certainly fine. The important thing is the water though. It, once those animals start to dehydrate, uh, their manure gets firmer and it's just harder to work with for, for the person that's preg checking. So that is, you know, one thing that just expecting them to, you know, gray snow overnight, uh, even though you might do that otherwise, it's sure nice when, when you're going to preg check that they've had access to water. Okay, and so when the vet does arrive, what sort of questions and what, what things should we talk to him or her about before we get going? Well, I, I think what's good to know is a how they're preg checking or uh, what, you know, what their preferences might be. Uh, for instance, one of the things that I'm most comfortable not having a post behind the animal, realizing yes, I could get kicked, but I hate the fact that if the animal drops and my arm is still in place, um, that it could, you know, end up fracturing or breaking my arm. So, um, and like I say, every vet has their own preference, so it's often good to ask and, and make sure that, uh, that you're aware of what their comfort level is or what they would like. And perhaps there might be animals where you still do need an animal just to get them held into the chute initially, and that's fine. But once I have them caught and we're convinced that we have them in squeezed and in place usually I ask for the post to be removed and I think like I said just in general having communication on who's doing what um, certainly this time of year there's a lot of things that can happen um, you might be putting Ivamec or pour on or deworming these cattle along at the same time um, that's quite common and so is that the vet's job or is that the person who's running the shoot and who's recording numbers if you are. So making sure there's good clear communication on what's going to happen and who's doing what. Um, usually it sorts itself out but it is sure nice to have that established ahead of time. So um, I think those are some of the questions and comments or even how you're marking your open cows. Some people like the tail switch cut off, others will notch the ear tag or even cut it right out. Not the CCIA button, that's for sure. Um, but, but, or putting big colored crayon marks on these animals as well, or paint. Um, I've seen everything from Rider Pride green to, <laughs> to uh, hot pink, you know, and I guess it's whatever, some producers don't want any mark on those animals when they go through the sale ring, they, they want them you know, and so you have to know the preferences and, and I think sharing that with your veterinarian is probably a good thing, what you want done. Um, so they know what to do if, if there is an open animal and maybe you'll mark them, but it's always important to have that, you know, let them know what you want done. Mm -hmm.